this is Christy Andrews and I play in the Signature Symphony and Principal Clarinet and I am offering these master classes to you. That was a little excerpt from a piece titled Executive by Michelle Mangini and it's uh, a nice, fun, beautiful piece with lots of technical passages and then beautiful lyrical phrases as well. Um, I just wanted to play a little bit for you so you could hear what a professional clarinet sounds like, what my tone sounds like. Um, something to uh, strive for. When I was in high school, I got to go to some clarinet symposiums at OU and Norman and was exposed to a lot of different clarinet players from all over the world. Um, and I was exposed to different styles of playing, um, different genres of music. So something kind of fun and unexpected when I went, um, what I expected was to hear a lot of classical recitals, a lot of classical clarinet repertoire. But when I went, there was that, plenty of that. And then in the evenings, they would do these jazz concerts. And so I got to hear how um, the clarinet could play jazz. Another style I was exposed to was some klezmer music. And that was really neat because it sounded um, like the clarinet was laughing or just like weeping. <laughs> and so there were lots of neat kind of sound effects that they could do um, when they were playing their clarinet. Um, and then the jazz music was just so fun and exciting and upbeat. And there was, you know, improv improvised solos, which was something that... Um, I'd only had a little bit of exposure to um, when playing saxophone in my high school jazz band and was always too scared to kind of branch out and do that kind of playing. So it was really, really cool to see um, that those different genres. And then, like I said, there's different styles of playing. Um, I heard a clarinetist play with vibrato and I had never been taught that a classical piece could be played with vibrato. And it actually adds kind of a nice little... Um, effect to the music, um, which is more widely accepted in Europe than over here in the United States. So you probably won't use it as much, but it is um, good to know about it. And especially if you play jazz, you will be doing vibrato. Um, so it's a good uh, skill to learn. And um, what else? Uh, there were different kinds of groups like chamber ensembles with other woodwind instruments or clarinet and strings. There's a very famous um, clarinet uh, uh, chamber piece by Mozart. There's one that he wrote and it's for clarinet and a string quartet, which is really cool. Um, I'm also currently working on a clarinet trio with a cellist and a pianist from Oral Roberts University where I'm teaching. And this is the, the Brahms trio. Um, you probably heard of the composer Johannes Brahms. That's one of his um, trios he's written. Um, so anyway, there was lots of opportunity to hear different things. And now you guys have YouTube so you can go on there, but I gotta tell you, just hearing those live is um, a whole another experience and it's um, very exciting um, to hear people actually perform live and kind of be in the moment there with them in the room, especially if you're doing the jazz stuff. I don't know, something about it, just sitting right below the clarinet player, watching him just take a solo is really, really cool. Um, so all of that to say, I just want to, to expose you to something um, that I'm working on, something you can hear instead of just all the technical stuff that I've been talking about in master classes. We will get to that. Um, so that's my little segue for getting to that. I wanted to let you know, I have found this fingering chart that goes to what I call Super C. Um, this is the highest note that you'll play on clarinet, um, even up into advanced clarinet solo work, which is usually the place you're gonna see more of the altissimo notes um, in the extreme altissimo. You will see altissimo notes in your band music, um, definitely if you're playing Sousa marches, um, even the second clarinet and the third sometimes will go up into the altissimo register on the clarinet. Um, so this is a great fingering chart to have for the clarinet. I found it online at clarinetfingeringchart.com. That's so handy. Um, there's a whole little web page and it'll kind of describe um, how to read the fingering chart where you have the, the covered holes colored, colored in solid. 
Um, and if, it, if the hole's supposed to be open, then there will not be a fill-in. It will just be white in the background. Um, and then it'll talk about the pinky keys and the register key and the thumb key on the back as well. So I would like for you guys to go to that website and print off the fingering chart that goes to Super C because your band books will not most likely go to that tie of a note. It'll go to G maybe, but it, um, but it won't go to that C. And so I want you to have that chart because that's going to help you from now till the end of your clarinet playing days on um, some of the fingerings that we learn. Something unusual to the clarinet is that whenever we have um, a note, let's just use C. Whenever we have C, and you guys know this one, thumb, one, two, three, um, there are different fingerings for that note based on which register you're in. So when you're on in a low register, which is called the Chalumeau register, this is the C fingering. <laughs> Sounds like that. When you are in the clarion register, you're gonna play this fingering for C with the thumb and the register key. When you're in the altissimo register, you're going to use the thumb C, the thumb and the register key. When you're in the extreme altissimo register and you're playing super C, typically the highest note on the clarinet, although I think I've had some grad school students um, figure out a D maybe up the, above that. But the C um, is really unusual. It's the thumb and register key first key, first key. Um, you also hold down or open the, the key here on um, the G sharp key. And then you use a C sharp key. And they're actually having you use this one here in the corner. So those are the four fingerings for the note C. And as you can tell from looking at your fingering chart, there that every, um, every note's going to have a new fingering. So that's kind of one of the challenges on clarinet. Um, we also have, as you saw on the C, four different versions of a note. So we're in different octaves on the clarinet. Um, I have given you all a warm-up that I'm calling the octave exercise. I just want to reiterate, we're not actually overblowing an octave like a flute or a saxophone does. They get to play um, this fingering for D, let's say, in the low register and the high register on the saxophone. But on the clarinet, when we play this D without the register key, it's a G. And then when we add the register key, it's a D. So it actually overblows the interval of the 12th. An octave would be D to D, eight notes, but the 12th is the D, the G to the D, okay? Um, so that's something to know about clarinet as well is that you're different that we're going to have um, overblowing a 12th, even though all the instruments are going to have like a typical octave key. Um, I nickname it that sometimes, uh, but it's really probably a register key is, is the correct term for that key because you're just changing register on the clarinet. So the different registers the clarinet has, um, I kind of mentioned them, the Chalumeau, which starts on the lowest note E. <laughs> To the F sharp and then you get into the throat tones which start on the open G one of the first notes you learn on the clarinet and um, that G is gonna be all the way up to the B flat which is our airiest note on the clarinet um, so for the throat tones I usually have students and your band directors will too most likely have you use your right hand down so it's the first second third finger and then the bottom inside key here or that it's on the F or the C whichever note you're thinking of I usually call it the C key okay which is in the clarion register which will be next um, so use right hand down like you're going to the C on all these throat tones G G sharp which is also called a flat a and B flat because when you go Chromatically up to the B, you're going what's called over the break on the clarinet. And and it's easier to go um, for, over the break with just one hand already prepared for the next note. So B flat to B. Or B flat to C. 
is much easier than going from all the holes open on a B flat to B or C. If you keep this right hand down, it, there's a lot less motion and a lot less holes to mess up on, to miss. Oftentimes we miss the holes directly and then we squeak or something doesn't come out right. So just go ahead and leave them down. Okay, so let's go back to the shot, uh, the um, throat tones, G. Then we're on the B and that's called the clarion register. Sounds like this. And we get up to the C. And then that last register is the altissimo register. Okay, so that's the extreme register that will have um, fingerings on that chart that I wanted you to have. Um, once my students get up to that high C, and then up to G, that's kind of where they learn in high school. Um, if you can learn a few notes higher than that, that helps you with the high G. Because if you're going up um, even higher, those are the hard notes now, not the notes that you're going to be playing in band, um, which will be the Fs and Gs and Es. Um, like I said, especially on Susan Marches or if you play any John Williams music, um, who wrote the music for Star Wars and a lot of the movie music. Um, you will be going up in that range and you will be expected to play very, very quickly up at that range. Um, so get familiar with those notes up there. Um, this is one of the things I've been working with you on is learning your chromatic scale through that. Um, because a lot of times your fast technical passages are going to be parts of your chromatic scale. Like it won't be from low E to super C. It'll just be, let's say G to C or something just simple. E to A, um, something like that, but it'll be really, really fast. And so um, I believe that's one of the reasons that the Band Director Association requires chromatic scale for your Allstate tryouts. Um, so if you're planning to do Allstate, you definitely got to learn chromatic scale. And they'll probably have you just go up to the high F, um, and I believe it's from the low, low F instead of our lowest note E. So the first note of chromatic scale would be E, but I think they just start you on F, the second note. Okay, and you'll wanna have it memorized too to make it so much easier um, in the long run. Um, once you start memorizing your scales, you're just going to be able to sight read so, so much better because a lot of the music is not just chromatic scale, but your major scales. Um, and I always wonder that too, as a student, I was like, why do I have to play all these scales? Um, I actually think I thought that when I was in piano lessons prior to band, I started like when I was eight years old on piano and I didn't really like or understand my scales. Like, why am I doing this? I just want to play the songs. <laughs> But then I got to the songs and the more I taught um, actually clarinet lessons, I discovered, oh, well, the scales are parts of the technical piece, parts of my music. Um, not that they can't be lyrical, but I just noticed it's really, really handy when it's fast and flying by um, that I know my scales and have them memorized in my fingers. And I like, I call that muscle memory. Um, you've may have heard of that term before, but your muscles memorize how to do the scale. I don't think of um, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and so on when I'm playing my scales. I just do the fingerings. I'm just like, oh, here's F scale. G scale. And so on. Um, so that I don't have to pause and think about the notes. I just do the fingerings. Um, so, Pull out your fingering chart once you've printed that off, and then I want to go over the fingerings really quickly. Once you print it, I would like you to actually circle the fingering on the chart that I want you to use for chromatic scale. So you can learn how to play the scale really, really fast um, with a lot of ease and comfort um, and be one of the ones that can just flail on it when you're auditioning. Um, and when I say flail, I don't mean sound 
um, sloppy because that's not gonna get you anywhere. We want the scale to sound really clean and flawless, um, fast, but not sloppy. So make sure it's really clean and clear when you're playing your scales quickly. Okay, so the first note is going to be the low E, and I'm gonna show you that even though, like I said, they'll have you start in a different spot for Allstate. But here's the low E. <laughs> Sounds like that. Then you lift your left pinky for F, and you bring it to the outside for the F sharp, the third note. So let's try that again. E, F, F sharp. And then G, lift both pinkies. And you want to kind of reposition them back here to home base. And then G sharp is the top pinky here on the inside. A. A sharp or B flat. And then on B natural, we're going to use a chromatic scale fingering, which is this little sliver key in here. Okay. Um, in your fingering chart, you're going to learn this is the B natural, right? This is kind of the first challenge in sixth grade band, learning B flat is this one, B natural is the middle one. Well, for chromatic scale, we don't want to flip back and forth because if we do, we might get this note C in between. And I'll show you what that sounds like. <laughs> Now we do want to get good at doing that, um, but I've been practicing a lot longer than you guys have. So that's going to take a lot of time. So save yourself a little bit of time on your chromatic scale and just use the fingering that will not get the C in there. And that's the sliver key. It's also the one you're going to use if you have to trail on a note, which means go really fast back and forth. It'll be marked TR with a little squiggly line in your music. So B flat B, then C to C sharp. So this is the pinky key on the upper joint for the C sharp, okay? So C, C sharp, D, and this is D sharp or E flat. Um, D sharp when going up, E flat when coming down the scale. Um, and so this is the bottom side key. You have four side keys. This is the top. You have a second one, a third one, and then the bottom one, number four. So for um, D sharp or E flat, I use the bottom one. And then notice where I'm hitting it on my right hand. I'm not going way back here to my fingertip. I'm actually trying to use as close to the inside of my hand as I can on this um, first knuckle here when I play that key. D to D sharp. And that's really fast, right? Easy to do without making an extra note. There is another fingering for D-sharp. It's a sliver key as well. I like to teach my students this one because this one you're going to use in sight reading much more often. Because um, the problem with using this one and learning really good, getting really good at this one is that when you have to go to C, it's really sloppy. So it's much easier to go between E flat and C, let's say, then this liver key. So let's get good at this one. Even though I had a teacher um, have me use this one for a chromatic scale, I wanna teach you guys this one because you're gonna use it more often. Um, so depending on your teacher, that, that might be a different note. So just be good at both of them. That's what I had to do and that has helped me so that I actually use this fingering now on occasion for different passages. Okay, so we're gonna use the side. So that was D to D sharp. And then we go to E, F. F sharp is gonna be the bottom two side keys. So key three and four on the side. If top one is um, one, two, you're gonna use three and four now. And again, you're gonna use the side of your finger for that note. You're not gonna use back here. You're not gonna use the tip. That's too far away from the hole. We wanna stay close to this hole as possible so that we can reach it when we have to play something fast after the F sharp. So if you had to play F sharp after B, uh, sorry, B flat after F sharp, you don't want to do, that's a lot of motion. We want to try to limit the whole, you know, body motion when we play as far as hand position. So uh, just use the side of the, the finger there. After F sharp, then G to G sharp, 
G sharp to this key over here on the side, and then A. B flat is the register key on the back. And then remember we talked about using right hand down. We could try that here. Then we would go to B, and B is just like the low E that we played. So we did low E, the very, very first note of the chromatic scale. Now if you add the register key to it, it's a, a B. And so that's where we're at, B. Now the nice thing about clarinet is while even though that the notes are not the same in the upper register, the chalumeau and the clarion register that we're about to play, the fingerings are the same. So the pattern that you learned down here, is exactly the same for up here. You just use a register key now. There's your fork. There's your side. And then that works all the way up to the thumb C. So the last note in the Shalimo register that um, you use fingerings on would be the low F. So low E to low F are the same as B to high C. Then you gotta pull out the fingering chart again and get to the high note fingerings, um, which are kind of unusual. So I'm gonna show you some of those too, um, which is C sharp. So I'm gonna pull my fingers back. This is bad, 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 bad hand position. You never want pinkies and fingers back here. But I just wanna show you the open holes on this one. So the top hole and the bottom hole on this note are open. I and then I have my thumb and register key pushed on the back. That's a C sharp. Absolutely no pinky, just open hole, open hole. Sounds like that. So you have to go from C to C sharp. It's a little unusual. All right, two, three, one, two is what I like to call it because second finger, third finger, first finger, second finger. All right, then for high D, you're gonna lift this middle finger and add the pinky to the E flat key. Got C sharp, D. Then we're gonna use a sliver key again for D sharp or E flat. C, E flat. And then we go to E, we're gonna lift these two together. C sharp, E. Then F is the pinky on the left hand, and this is on the upper joint of the clarinet, the top half, so no lower joint keys. This is F, your pinky's still chilling out right here on the E flat, uh, E to F. And then F sharp. You lift these two together on the left hand to get your F sharp. Now this note is just two fingers. It's the middle of your left hand and the pinky of your right. If you have to play this um, for a long period of time, it's an attitude note. And so we want to use um, the sliver key on the F sharp when you can. So here's the difference, F sharp with and without, without and then with. You hear it kind of bending in and out of tune there. So um, this little sliver key is going to raise the pitch into tune with the tuner, okay? Um, so on chromatic scale, I don't necessarily use it when I'm playing it super fast. But if I'm playing a slower passage chromatically, then I will use it. So it's good to be able to learn that both ways, that F sharp, with and without the sliver key. So I'm going to show you the fast version, which is without it. So F sharp to G. And there's... I don't know, I have a fingering chart with 14 different fingerings for high G. Um, we're gonna use the first one listed in your chart that you printed off. So it's the middle finger and the first two. So we went F sharp, G. And then G sharp is middle, middle. Okay, so G to G sharp. And then G sharp to A. This is like a lower E, the altissimo E. So here's the E. A is what we call overblowing um, and voicing. We're gonna voice that note to hit the higher pitch. Um, we also voice the note to get the lower note because it's the exact same fingering. Um, in your fingering chart, it's gonna show um, the C sharp key as the pinky key that you use, but for chromatic scale, 
We're gonna go ahead and use the second fingering listed there um, where it is on the um, E flat key, just like the, all the notes ahead of it. And that happens all the way up to the top. Instead of using the C sharp key, we're gonna stay on the E flat key, um, even on Super C where it's not listed in the chart. Um, okay, so we were on A. So let me do G, G sharp A. And then A to A sharp or B flat is everything down, including this little side G sharp key. You're gonna have to cover the hole and push this down with the side of your finger. And then you have your pinky down here, your pinky down here and all the holes covered. Again, that's gonna take a lot of voicing. Um, the voicing that I am thinking in my throat is E or he. He because it puts the air over the tongue, or E because it arches the tongue really, really high. And that's what you want when you're playing clarinet. You want that arched high tongue position. So you have um, A sharp or B flat, same, same, but same key on the piano, same fingering on the clarinet, and then B and C. So here is the B flat. B, one, two, one, two, and then C is one and one. Are the top three notes A sharp, B, C. And I actually just keep this down the whole time too for all of those when I'm playing it that high. So that is the chromatic scale um, figuring. So pull up your chart and your pencil, and I'm going to go through and let you know which ones to circle now so that you can practice it on your own in your own pacing and see how far you can get and how high you can get would be another challenge. Um, so on the first low E, circle the first fingering on the chart. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I'm saying circle. If you can see that, got the first note circled there. Um, then the next one, you'll circle the first fingering for low F. On the third note, F sharp, you'll circle the first fingering again. So that's all good and well. Then the rest of the first line, you only have one option for that note, so you're good. When you get down to the B natural, you're going to circle the second fingering. That is the fork B. Then C, C sharp, and D are as written. D sharp, E flat. Notice in the same um, bracket there or measure, they have the D sharp and the E flat listed. Um, I like to think of the sharps going up because the sharp raises a note to a higher pitch. A flat lowers the note, um, the half step. So let's call it D sharp going up the scale, E flat going down the scale. Um, but that language is called inharmonic. It just means they're, they're spelled differently, but they sound the same. So uh, the fingering won't change on those. We are going to use the first fingering on the D sharp E flat. And then we have the note E, then the note F, and then we get to F sharp. F sharp is gonna be the second fingering on the fingering chart, not the first. You will learn the first one in band first, and you'll play that a lot. But when you have an F natural next to an F sharp in your band music, use the side key for F sharp. Um, then we go on to the third line of the fingering chart, G, G sharp. Um, again, just a reminder, you can use your right hand down right here on G, G sharp, which is also called A flat. A um, is the A key, so that's the first fingering, unless you're using right hand down which they showed you an option for that on the second fingering. Um, so if you wanna play your chromatic scale with right hand down, use the second fingering on that one. The next note is A sharp or B flat. And so let's use the first fingering on that one as well. Again, you can add right hand down to that. Um, then we're on the note B. And so you circle the same ones you did on the first half. So quickly, the note B is the first one. The note C is the first one. The note C sharp is the first one. Then you have D, D sharp, which is also E flat, E, F. 
as written. Then F sharp is the forked fingering, the second fingering option for F sharp or G flat. Then G, G sharp and A are as written. When you get to A sharp or B flat, it is the first fingering. Then B and C are as written, same as C sharp is written. D is as written. D sharp or E flat is the forked fingering with the little sliver key, so it's the first fingering there. Then you have E is written. F is the first fingering on the chart. Um, and I'll mention here on that high F, that second fingering, the nickname for that is the long F because you're covering all the holes. You're making the tube longer by covering the holes and producing a sound. But we're just gonna use the first one on F. Then we go to high F sharp, which is the first one. Um, that's the one where you could add in the little sliver key. So I would make a note of that if you would, to add sliver key um, on the right hand to bring that one in tune. Then you have the note G, which is the first fingering. Then G sharp, which is the first fingering. Then the A, which is the second fingering because I want my pinky to stay on that E flat key. I don't wanna to go to the C sharp key there that they're showing you in the first one. So you second fingering on high A. Then for high A sharp, we're gonna use the long fingering where all the holes are covered. And then also, if you would color in the top pinky key on that A sharp instead of the bottom, or just point to it with an arrow and um, just say keep E flat key pressed instead of that C key or instead of C sharp key. Okay, and then you have B and C, the last two notes, and those also use the E flat key for my version of the chromatic scale um, instead of the C sharp key, which is the one that is marked. Okay, so that is the, those are the fingerings I recommend for chromatic scale for the best technique, um, for clean technique, um, so that you don't get extra notes in between, you know, like finger flips and things. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please come into my classes and I will uh, be happy to help you with anything that you have a question about on that scale. Um, so hope you have a good afternoon and I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye guys.